Hello students, welcome to Saurav Sir's classes. In this video, we are going to solve a set September 2019 question paper which was held a few days back. So let us begin with our question paper. And in this question paper, we are going to solve the logical reasoning part starting with question number 67 because the previous questions have been solved in our previous videos. So question 67 says tiebreaker is an additional contest or period of play designed to establish a winner among tied contestants. So here we have been given a brief description about tiebreaker and what is a tiebreaker? A tiebreaker is basically an additional contest or a game which is played just to uh, determine the winner among tied, uh, tied contestants. So in a game or in a competition or in any competition if there are two contestants or more than two contestants who have tied their scores so there is a tiebreaker match which determines the winner of that contest. Now, which situation below is the best example of a tiebreaker? So, here we have been given four real life situations and we need to find which of these four belongs to a, uh, which of these four is an exact example of a tiebreaker. So, first and uh, first example you can read over here is at half time of a basketball match, the score is tied at 28-28. The second half of the match is about to begin. So, here you can see that the score is a tie between two point, uh, two match uh, like uh, two teams in a basketball game but the match is not yet over the match is at half time here you can see the match is at half time and the match is not yet over and the second half of the match is still remaining so we cannot say that both the teams have the same score uh, they have the score, same score in the first uh, that is half time they, that is the first half of the match but they do not have the same score in the overall match so we cannot say that this match have been tied between two uh, teams so the second half of the match is still remaining so there the second half cannot be known as a tiebreaker because even if the score of these two teams would have been different the second half uh, second half match or second half part of the match is still remaining but uh, like this is not a tiebreaker this is the uh, this is the pattern of the game and not a tiebreaker now moving on to the second option here, in second option you can see Punjab and Haryana each finished having scored no goals in a football match and now they are battling out in a 30 minute overtime. So overtime, here you can see what does overtime mean. Overtime means that uh, this is the extra allotted time of for some cause and uh, here you can see what is the cause for this overtime. In for the cause for this overtime is that both these teams that is Punjab and Haryana both of the Football teams of Punjab and Haryana have scored no goals. So their score is 0-0. So this is the score of uh, Punjab and Haryana in football match. And now they are battling out in a 30 minute overtime. So this overtime can be known as a tiebreaker which will break this tie of 0-0 score and determine which team will mean, win this match. So this can this overtime, this 30 minute overtime is will be known as a tiebreaker which will break the tie of Punjab and Haryana scoring no goals in a football match. So option B uh, seems to be a good example of tiebreaker. Now we will also check option C and D and check whether we have another options, uh, another examples of tiebreaker or not. So option B can be a possible answer. Now in option C you can see the referee uh, tosses a coin to decide which team will have a possession of the ball first so this seems to be a cricket match and in this team uh, in this match the referee is tossing the coin to decide which team will have the possession of the ball first so means which team will be bowling first but here there is nothing of a tide like there is no tie between the teams the uh, match is just starting because uh, the toss is happening over here so the match is just starting now and there is no case of a tie between these two teams so C cannot be a correct option also. Now moving on to the last option, option number D says Delhi and Bihar have each scored 8 goals in a football match, uh, football tournament. They will now play each other in the final match of the tournament. So here you can see both of these teams have yeah, scored 8 goals. So this is like a same situation in the first option where both the teams scored 28-28 in the half time but the second half was still remaining. But here you can see both these teams have scored 8-8 in a football match. and the, now the second part over here says they will now play each other in the final match of the tournament. So uh, in the final match of the tournament means that this specific match, this football in this football tournament, this specific match uh, like they have scored 8 goals each. So they have scored the 8 goals in the total tournament and not just uh, against each other. So this is not a valid score. This 8 
eight eight is not a valid score. They have scored eight goals. Like uh, in scorecard, we will write Delhi have scored eight number of goals as well as Bihar has also scored eight number of goals and some other uh, some other cities have scored some different scores or maybe less scores than these these two uh, states. So basically, these two are uh, going to play the final match of the tournament. But this will not be a tiebreaker. But this will be a final match where both these have. Been playing with different teams and have scored eight goals each. But now they will play the final match of the tournament, which will not be a tiebreaker because there is no tie between these two uh, teams in a match. But this they have tied in a tournament, so they will be playing the final match of the tournament. So this cannot be said as a tiebreaker, and hence option B you can see is the only example of a perfect tiebreaker. So option B will be the correct answer to this question. Now moving on to the next question here, you can see we have question number sixty-eight. So question sixty-eight says. Three sides adjacent to a single corner of a cube of side equal to four centimeter are painted red. Okay, so here we have a cube of side equal to four centimeter, and the adjacent side of the uh, adjacent sides, three adjacent sides of this cube are painted red. So first, let us take a cube over here with a side equal to four centimeter. So as you can see, we have a cube over here with side four centimeters each. these all the sides are of 4 cm now it is cut into 64 small pieces of equal size so you here you can see division of each side in 16 uh, boxes so basically this whole cube is divided into 64 small cubes where each side is divided into four divisions that is four cubes of 1 cm each now how many small cubes have at least two sides painted so we need to find the small cubes with two sides painted or three sides painted as you can see at least two sides so at least two sides or more than two sides so two sides and the other option will be three sides because uh, in a cube painting uh, more than three sides is not possible because uh, at at the corners you can see there are the most number of sides visible at the corners at the eight corners and the maximum number of side visible of a small cube is three so there can be Uh, small cubes with two sides painted or three sides painted. So let us count over here. As you can see, we can see only the three sides of the cube, three adjacent sides of the cube. And in our question also, you can see they have said that three sides adjacent to a single corner. So we will assume this to be the single corner, and these three are the three adjacent sides we are talking about in the question. And three sides of a cube of side equal to four centimeter are painted red. So we will assume that this side is totally painted red. This side was also painted red, and this side is also painted red. So you can see the total uh, cube which is painted red. Now we can easily count the number of small squares who which are painted at least two sides or three sides. So starting from this, starting from this corner, as you can see from this part, you can see that one cube, two cube, three cube, and four cube, where this fourth cube has three sides painted, and again on this side, again on this side, you can see one, two, three. small cubes painted because and now the last one is this side with again 1 2 and 3 so there will be three okay so there will be three from this plus three from this plus three from this so total nine small squares with two sides painted so we have two side painted nine squares as well as we have a Square over here, which is three side painted. Here you can see we have a square over here, a small square over at this corner of these three adjacent, uh, these three adjacent sides where this uh, square of three sides is painted. So there will be plus nine plus one square, which is three side painted. We have been said at least two sides, so we will consider two sides as well as three sides. So nine plus one will give us ten. So 10 will be the correct answer, which will be 10 small squares, which are at least two sides or three sides painted. So B over here says 10, so B will be the correct answer to this question. Now moving on to the next question here, you can see question number 69. So question 69 over here says, at what time between 9 and 10 o'clock will the hands of a watch be together? So as you can see, let us draw uh, 9 and 10 o'clock over here. So we are assuming this to be our Clock and we have markings over here like twelve, six, three, nine. Then we have one, two, four, five, seven, eight, ten, and eleven. 
so here we need to find the difference uh, the time between 9 and 10 o'clock with the hands be uh, like will the hands of be at the same together means the hands will be together so first let us draw 9 o'clock so our 9 o'clock something looks like this so this is the hour hand okay so this will be here so this is the this one is the minute hand and this one is the hour hand so this is basically 9 o'clock and we need to find between 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock what is the time when both these uh, hands will be together so as you can see for uh, hand to be together this hour hand should travel 45 minutes to reach this minute hand oh, sorry this minute hand this is the minute hand and this is the hour hand so minute hand needs to travel for 45 minutes to reach the hour hand so here you can see uh, we have a rule in clocks that the gap is reduced uh, the gap reduces by 45 minutes in every 60 minutes because you can see once this uh, hour hand once this minute hand travels for 60 minutes this hour hand will go for another 5 minutes according to the hour hand, according to the minute hand and the difference will be reduced difference here will be reduced to 40 minutes so basically they travel they they means cover the gap of 55 minutes in 60 minutes so here in 55 minutes they cover the gap of 60 minutes so what we need to find in what time will this gap of 45 minutes be covered so for 45 minutes the calculation will be 60 by 55 into 45 so this is the required time for the hour hand to uh, come together with the minute hand and calculating this we will get 49 1 by 11 minutes so basically this is the amount of time required for this minute hand this minute hand to come and get together with this hour hand so 49 1 by 11 after calculation we have got 49 1 by 11 which means option number c which says 49 1 by 11 minutes past 9 so after 9 after 49 1 by 11 minutes after 9 the minute hand will come and get together with the hour hand so our answer will be option number c now moving on to the last question of this question paper as well as the logical reasoning part which is question number 70 so question 70 says in the following two statements are given so you can see two statements one and two followed by three conclusions numbered one two and three so there are three conclusions one two and three you have to take the given statements to be true even if they seem to be at variance with commonly known facts so we will assume these two statements to be true even if they assume they are uh, like they variance they are variance at the uh, like we know the common facts but we need to assume these to be true even if they are not assumed to be true like even if these two statements doesn't seem to be true we need to hold them to be true now read all the conclusions and then decide which of the given conclusion logically follows from the given statements disregarding commonly known facts so here we have been two statements and we need to assume these two statements to be true now we need to find which of these conclusions is actually concluded from these two statements so the two statements over here are all eye drops are liquids so all eye drops are liquids and the second uh, second statement over here is some eye drops are ear drops okay so all eye drops here we have eye drops all eye drops are liquid so this belongs to a group liquid so all eye drops are liquid so we can consider this as like this these this square represents the liquid and this figure represents the eye drops so basically all eye drops are liquids and the second says some eye drops are ear drops so we can assume this as like this this is the eye drops and these are the ear drops so let me write over here this is eye drops and this is ear drops and some of the eye drops are ear drops so basically this part some of the eye drops are ear drops now let us move on to the conclusion so first conclusion says some eye drops are drinkable so as you can see in these statements there is nothing mentioned about drinkable whether eye drops are drinkable liquids are drinkable or ear drops are drinkable or not but conclusion says some eye drops are drinkable but we do not know anything about drinkable so our conclusion number one is absolutely wrong because we cannot conclude anything about drinking the eye drop from these two statements now option number two says some ear drops are drinkable so again in option two we can see that they have said that eye drops ear drops are drinkable but we do not know anything about the drinkability of the ear drops 
so conclusion 2 is also not a conclusion from the statements given and now option 3 says all liquids are eye drops so from this equation you can easily guess that uh, they are saying all liquids are eye drops but if we choose a liquid from this part which is outside the eye drop so this liquid is not an eye drop so this conclusion cannot be concluded from the given statements hence any of the three conclusions cannot be concluded actually from these two statements so in the options you can see which conclusions follow logically so none follows none of the three statements uh, sorry none of the three conclusions follow from these two statements so our answer will be option number d that is none false so i will like to end this video here and we have completed solving a set september 2019 question paper